Today in Baldur's Gate 3, we will be stealing all of the treasures in Sorcerer's Sundry, as well as whatever lies within the secret basement, all the way to the top of the towers. No arcane barriers will stop us. We'll also be discovering the book that Gale is looking for and his ultimate master plan to become the master of the universe. Also, do you remember the wizard Zamath who was searching for the Night Song? Well, we're going to be telling him the bad news. So we're going to start out here just outside the tower of the Sorcerer Sundries. All right, here we are at the front entrance to the Sorcerer's Sundries. Wait, is this? Calm down. Let me back in. I'll bring Laroakin out here, you tin tube. No comment. You tell Laroakin I went for his goddamn night song, and now he has to pay up. What are you looking at? Don't I know you? Maybe. I don't know you, though. And I'd thank you to get out of my face. You literally told me about the night song. What's your mouth? Get out of my face. I've lost good people to the wizard that owns that shop. Laroakin. Offered a huge pile of cash to chase down some relic called the night song. If he'd mentioned it was buried under a goblin hive, I'd never have taken my people there. He owes me a lot. I found the night song, actually. Turns out it wasn't a relic, but an asima. An asima? You found it? Where is it? Don't get ahead of yourself. Laura Can wanted her alive, and she's dead. And I suppose you were stupid enough to kill her. Nope. <laughs> Son of a... You had a small fortune in your grasp, and you let it go. I ought to knock some sense into you. But you know what? I'm too goddamn tired. If she's out there, I'm gonna find her. You mark my words. This guy even listening to me? <laughs> Where is he going now? Are we gonna see him later? Looking for the night song still. Apparently I'm allowed in. Wow, this place is nuts. There's a water elemental, a lava elemental. We need to run around and find the bookseller though. I think he's just here. Jesus, dude, chill Look, out. A bookseller. She can point us to the tome I need. Okay. Literature department. Can I help you? Oh, she's whispering. Okay. Why are you whispering? Whist. These books are sensitive. They prefer an environment of quiet reverence. <laughs> Is that true books? Are you sensitive? Are you serious? Look what you've done! By all the gods, I give my ear for the least bit of respect for the written word. Go act the clown on your own time. Come back when you've cobbled together some manners and are prepared to pay for the damages. <gasps> Sorry about that. I now understand that books need to be well treated. Lesson learned. 400 gold. Oh, I'm trying to find a book about an Everest crown. Huh. Bold. You might have heard that our library has a collection other shops would lack the skill to curate. Between us, even Master Leverokin was reluctant to house them in his tower. The pen is mightier than the magic wand. Apparently. <laughs> They're locked away here for their and our customers' safety. Our finest reserve includes the Tharkia Codex, the Annals of Cassius and Netherese Folly, Sites of the Sealy, and the Curriculum of Strategy. Do any of those interest you? I'll buy them all. The Annals of Cassius and Netherese Folly. And that's what Raphael was talking about. It is said to be written by Lord Cassus himself, the Netherese Arcanist who attempted to replace the goddess Mistra, failed, and was banished for the attempt. Great magical knowledge lies within those pages, but not many can withstand it. Hmm. That's it. That's what I need. Okay. The Annals of Carsus would no doubt have much to say about the Crown's true nature. 
Sounds perfect. How much for us to buy it from you? Buy? Books as temperamental as these are not on sale. They are secured in our vault, where none can harm them, nor can they do any harm. Ah. Consider yourself lucky to have learned of such a book's existence, and then forget about it. The annals of Carthus are best left unread. Unless you want a very nasty paper cut, you're going to tell me where that vault is. 16. Ah! He wasn't convinced by the paper cuts. The vault is strictly prohibited for customers. If you don't cease this foolishness, the rest of Sorcerer's Sundries will be as well. Let's ask nice. Gale if he knows where the vaults yeah, are. Particular. This is hardly the time for idle banter. The annals of Carsus are here, waiting to be read. Well, where's the vault, Gale? Let's speak to Lorcan's projector. Maybe we can trick him. Welcome, dear patron, to Sorcerous Sundries. I am an unperson in service of the revered wizard Lorcan, proprietor of this fine establishment. To browse our wares, say, trade. To provide information about the Night Song, say, Night Song. Oh, okay. If you are a city official here to collect dues, say, taxes. For all other inquiries, say, other. Wow, it's literally like one of those phone helplines. It's hilarious. Night Song. The provision of information that leads to the retrieval of the Night Song is worth a great deal to Master Laroican. Do you have information regarding the night song? Yes, yes I do. Please proceed upstairs for further instructions. Very Thank well. Thank you. Please come again soon and have a magical day. So enthusiastic. All right, let's head upstairs then. Speak to the master magician. Welcome, dear patron, to the floor at the top of the stairs. Yes. If you have information about the night song, Great riches await. If you are here to waste the great wizard Laroican's time, reconsider. Let your knowledge determine your path forward. Oh, hello. So there are one, two, three, four portals. Let's just go with the left one. The left one's always right. Got an apple on his head. <laughs> okay, I already uh, like uh, this uh, guy. Hold very still, Niklaw. Uh, Craig's aim is much improved, but uh, still leaves something up to chance. Yes, sir. Uh... All right, Crank. Ready? Aim. Fire! You shout fire. Mm. Oh. Mm. We have a visitor. At ease. McClaw, you may go. Interrupt of something very important there. <laughs> I see no night song. Surely you wouldn't have entered my tower without the night song in hand, hmm? Surely my worthless apprentice wouldn't have allowed you to waste my time. Not quite the enthusiastic welcome I was hoping for. You'll have more gratitude than you know how to count once the night song is in my hands. Do you have it or not? can bring her, even if I wanted to. <laughs> Doesn't know she's dead. Uh, 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 explain yourself. Why do you want us so badly? I'm growing tired of this repartee, my friend. Let us cut to the chase. Beautiful. Want. Isn't it? Worth more than your life, too. I bought it from a Kalashite warlock. There's very little of his soul left to him. It can bind a celestial to the wearer's service with a snap of the fingers. And this... Ah. This can keep her in place. 
forever. I've seen this magic trick before. A clever contraption. Let me guess. Like Catherick Thorne before you, you wish to become immortal. It didn't work out for poor Catherick, did it? He was a fool. A desperate mercenary who hoard out his soul to whichever god flattered him. <laughs> I serve no god, but that which stares back at me in the mirror. The night song will be put to a grand purpose, equalizing man and god. Whoever helps me attain that which I seek will be greatly rewarded. What is the reward that we get for helping him? Obviously, it's impossible for us to help him anymore, but... Man, he made me cringe really hard just then, physically. There's more to divinity than lifespan. Ensnaring an immortal won't make you a god. I think we already established that in Act 2. Of course not. But perhaps, after enough lifetimes, I might make a start of it. He would seek the power of gods for the pettiest of reasons. His own gratification. At least I seek them for the better of all. Uh, what's that? I didn't quite catch the words, but the insolent tone was clear enough. Uh, pitying, not insolent. <laughs> you chase one power without knowing an even greater one lies within my reach. The crown of Carsus. Once we acquire it, your ambitions will be dwarfed. I'll be able to stand against Mistra and wrest her powers from her for the betterment of all. The crown of Cassus. Nonsense. Even if it still existed, you couldn't possibly handle its power. <laughs> Perhaps you could not. But Netheril's power is in my blood. And Mistra? I know her in ways that most mortals can only dream of. Ah. So it is you. Mistra's discarded lapdog. And now you think your bark is cause to make me tremble? There is no need for me to bark. My actions will speak for themselves. In time. Then go. Axe. I'll open a fine vintage in your name once word of your failure reaches me. It is literally... <laughs> two, two wizards in a room is like a wiener comparing contest. It... It couldn't be any more accurate. Like, I feel like that is exactly these two personalities. Oh, so similar and oh, so clashing. Gail keeps telling me how he's going to be using this crown or the artifacts of the greater good with Mistress Powers and the good he can do for humanity. But in reality, too much power has only ever caused damage. Back to the subject of Night Song. Sorry to tell you, but she's dead. Run it through with a Sharon Spear. Dead? It cannot be. She, it, is immortal. A god. Not anymore. Thanks to me. No, it was. She was a Selunanite. She was a Selunite held by Sharans. Her death was inevitable. Is that meant to be some consolation? She, it, was the key to my immortality. Rip. How can this be? How can this be? There's nothing better than watching powerful people who think they know everything fall to pieces. 127 health, level 11. I've decided I don't like this guy. All right, so we're all standing behind Kazador. I'm going to enter turn-based mode. I'm going to get Lazelle to throw a potion of speed right in between us like this. So it hits all three of us. Arglash will get you to stand just here. So they can't get past if he tries to run. Let's get Arglash to level two bless our party. Boom. And just go for like the most powerful attack we can do with Divine Smite level three. Hopefully we can just kill him in one hit. We have the potential to. And now you have one. He's not dead. He's not dead. Oh, he's so close to dying, though. Ah! Ah! Ooh. Ah! 
shield bash. He's immune. Okay, we can now kill Laura Can. He has 12 health. If I just sneak attack him, 99% advantage. She's dead. Stopping the repetition of history. Gale is inspired. How high they fall. Uglash is also inspired. Let's team up on this fire. Oh no, he's getting a free attack on me. Okay, he missed. He missed. That's good. That's good. We'll go and attack this guy. We'll mark him like some kind of football player. Okay, we're in a silent aura. So Gale's now useless. And Astarian is being teamed up on. Ooh, he missed. Okay, good. He missed everything. Oh, hello. Let's go ahead and try and make him fear. This is your end. So he's frightened now, which is great. Now we just go ham on him. Okay, not bad. How many attacks do I get? I'm confused. Action surge. We just need to kill this thing. Otherwise, Gale can't cast a spell. Oh boy, that's not ideal. We can't do anything. Eight health. Gale can't cast now. Uglash can finish this guy. What? Why is he prone? For what reason? Okay, this dwarf is going to get wrecked now. Uh, okay. Starring just got clapped. Okay, let's just attack the air one to finish him. Okay, luckily we actually made a hit. Now we can attack. Got 91% advantage on him. Eight damage. He's running. I get an opportunity attack. All right, let's try and fear the fire elemental. Yes, critical here. Might actually be able to kill it this turn. 11 health. Good, good. Distracting strike. Let's go. Now he'll get disadvantage if he doesn't attack us. We can hit both of these with a glyph of warding, so let's just go for it. Level 3 divine smite. Let's go. Try again. Not bad. Oh my god, critical hit, yes. Oh, why are we on the floor? I can't see the ice on the red carpet. And now it's water anyway. Man, Gale just got stopped. Missile snaring? Oh my god, we saved our life. Oh, and it missed, thank god. Right, let's finish him off now with our sneak attack. Come on, free damage on a critical. He's climbing up here now. This guy, this crank guy is a joker. Finish him off later. All right, let's jump on this balcony. He's going to attack later, I guess, because he can't see anyone else. Get wrecked. Oh, okay, that was meaty. Not going to lie. But we were a goner there. What now? So what does this uh, Laura Can mage have on him? Shelter of Athakalta. Mirror image spell. You get advantage of saving throws against spells and you have mirror image level two. Arcane enhancements, plus one to spell save DC and spell attack rolls. Is this a book thrown? Dude, that is actually quite cool. Very appropriate for this guy. Hopefully it's not too suspicious that I just come back downstairs with the wizard staff. Is there anything useful on... Oh, there's a chest up here. It's not even locked. This book appears to be a bespoke edition, not mass printed the, like the other series. A note is affixed to the front page. Dear sir, though I appreciate your attempt to contribute to our popular series, I'm afraid we are not accepting reader submissions at this time. Furthermore, I'd recommend our fact checker, Hope Candor, for your personal employ should you wish to attempt to publish this volume under a different name elsewhere. Laura Can Editor's Edition? Oh no. Bless him. <sighs> He knows nothing. He's just this boisterous mage, isn't he? Self-obsessed. Okay, let's go and have a look on the balcony. Damn. Oh my god. How high up are we? Dude, I can see over the entirety of Baldur's Gate. This is actually a game where it looks like a city. And when, obviously, it's not this big, but, you know, when you're down there, it feels like a city. Barricaded doors. Oh, we can go on the bottom level then? Jeez, look at this. It's beautiful. Crawl of Chain Lightning. Very rare. What is this ornate letter? Lorikan, I responded out of respect to my counselor, Balthazar, who advises me that you prove a loyal ally in the coming fight. I understand you wish to know about the soul cage which binds the Night Song to me. 
Details I cannot and will not provide, but the magic itself is necromatic in nature. Designed by my aforementioned counselor. I hope your curiosity is satisfied. General Ketherick Thorn. But he was going to help with the absolute, so by killing him, he actually probably did a good thing unintentionally. So I am interested because, look, it looks like I can jump on this table right here. Floating. I don't know why it's... I can jump down again. That takes me to the next level if we jump down here. Arcana check. Fail. Get off the table. Now she's surprised. Caution is warranted here. Caution for what? There's an opulent chest over here. Let's loot this chest and see what we get. There's also a weave button. I don't know what that means. Smoke powder arrow. Dude, that sounds really powerful. What is outside then? Can we jump outside? There's another weave button here. I don't know what all these buttons do. I'm not going to press them just yet. There's a barricaded door here. Can we break this down? We Don't can. take you first. Takes me back inside. Yeah, there's nothing special here necessarily. Oh, another dear. chest. Someone's left a trap. A gas pit. There's so many weave buttons though. All right, let's walk down onto the center floor here. As I can see, there's a staff down there. Fine. Better be careful not to trigger that thing. Fine. Let's obviously you send the one health gear with Misty Step down onto the bottom floor. Wait, what are you doing, Gail? I'm confused. How do I get down there then? I thought I just Misty Step down there. Uglush can jump down there. Oh no, he can't. Oh, oh there's a magic barrier. Ready. I think we'll go ahead and short rest and then we'll figure this out. All right, there must be a way to get past this barrier. And I think it has to do with these weave buttons. There's four of them. Let's just see what happens. Traps. Oh. How considerate. But how are the traps, though? I can't see any traps. So this weave button takes me back to the top. I didn't realize it was a teleporter. Heavy iron key. And I guess this trap chest is trapped. But there's a key in here in a glass box. And there's two arcane barriers. Let's disarm this trap with a star. Something in. over there. Something over there. 23. Heavy iron key. And this is just open, this chest. Elixir of sea invisibility. Maybe that helps with the puzzle. Interesting that they put that there. And sharpness. And also sorcerer's sundries mystery door key. Can I use scroll of dimensions door? Or can I use misty step? Can't stand anywhere. Go drink the potion. Okay, okay, so there's some levers now. Okay, activate this. 20 plus 4. Can I use guidance from Gale as well? Oh, I can't back out. 19? Oh, plus, thank God. Oh my God, I was so anxious about that one. So we've just got Could the Staff of Markenshire. Arcane Enchantment. You gain plus one bonus to spell save, DC, and spell attack rolls. You can cast spells without spell slots. The next spell you cast doesn't cost a spell slot. Imbue your weapon with elemental energy sourced from the Draconic Geldess. It looks all right. Not enough resources to act. Oh, exit turn base. Now you can do it. 20 again. 24. Robe of the Weave. It's a plus one to spell save DC and attack rolls. Weave Eater. Whenever the wearer succeeds a saving throw against the spell, they gain one to six hit point. Above. Oh, so that's an invisible button. It tells you that you go over here and that says below. Okay, that makes sense. All right, let's head back up over. and back through and the through. portal. Go downstairs. Hopefully no one attacks us. Okay, we're safe. Good. I want to know where these other portals go. Or what happens if we speak to his illusion? Welcome back, dear patron. Remember that the great wizard doesn't suffer fools who waste his time. No, oh, the great wizard, eh? You're the last Let thing left. Knowledge. He is the last thing left of this so-called great wizard. Oh, is it this metal door? We use our invisibility. Let's just go ahead and lock quick it. 15. Easy. Inside. Hello. Master Lorcan requested his Tome of Divination spell be brought to the basement. Okay, so we can find that there. That's pretty useful. Notes on the Night Song. Ooh. 
What's there a sundry's basement key? And a class book. This opens a portal. Where does it go? Oh, damn. This is the vault where they hid the book that Gail wanted. I don't know if I can even make... Oh, okay. Oh, no. The floor is auto-saving. The floor is fake. So we can just stand on it. There's a few scrolls here and a ledger. There's multiple floors to this library we're in. There's a list of scrolls and staffs. Madame, it is no secret that yours is the finest collection of records within this fair city. This scroll brings you a query I believe only you can resolve. It has been a long-held bit of law within my family that we are descendants of Lariel Silverhand through my mother's line, though no existing genealogy can confirm our claim. Would you be so kind as to investigate the matter? I'll also a metal chest here. Myself. And it looks like this is a secret passage. There's like a... That might be worth a look. Oh, there's a button. Where does this go? Oh, there's a wooden chest. Can I walk it? Yes, I can. It's so unnerving. Yeah, easy enough. Starion's now got this puck. He can't get below a 10. Gaunt Ice Storm on uh, these checks. I just want to see if I open this, does it open with the lock? Oh, the key we got. Sorcerer Sundry's basement key unlocks everything here. Interesting. I mean, this looks like a trap, doesn't it? There's so many chests here. So this is still locked. We have to lock pick this. We need a 20. The Red Knight's final strategy. Before her time as an exarch of Tempus and Goddess of Strategy, the Red Knight was a paladin most devout. These pages contained that of her which was left on the material plane after her ascension. Well, well. Someone's a treasure trove of wicked spells. 18 to 78 damage. And there's tons of ingredients here. A scroll of haste could come in handy. Probably don't need it on my rogue. Purple worm toxin. Wow, that's really good. Can I just take this book, actually? Oh, look, it looks awesome. It's got like a, a horse chess piece. 2,000 it's worth. I wonder if I can take it and then sell it back to the book lady upstairs and she won't be mad at me anymore. Okay, so let's go back into this room. And now there's another metal case just here. And then we got to go through this door. Scroll of Eye Bite worth 600 gold. Mate, there's so many expensive scrolls in here. This is where the powerful magic is. Let me in. Let me in! Let's unlock this as well. We can just open it because we've got that basement key. Don't need to waste our lock picks. Oh, this one actually is locked. Oh, Potion of Supreme Healing. Restricted area. No entry to vaults. Trespassers will be disintegrated. Master Laroican. I have the key. Because there are traps about. There's a pressure plate at each door, so I was thinking there must be one at this door that I just stepped on. Oh dear. Someone's left a trap out for us. We can disarm these. Silver Hand. Carsus. Elminster. Silver hand was mentioned in that note. So let's open this door first and see if we die. Oh! No, 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 no. Nothing seemed to happen there when we clicked on it. A trap. Someone. Okay, now there's multiple traps around. Evocation, illusion, or abjuration. Let's just spin around. Close my eyes. And then we stop here. Abjuration. We'll go on this one then. I'll jump over this very obvious trap. Is this a maze? Oh my god, I'm standing on a pressure plate. Wild, shadow, demon, silver. Well, silver. We went through silver. Oh, one sec, one sec. Ah, interesting. Ah, uh, no, I feel like I've cheated now. Because look, you can look outside the area and I can see these doors are, are going to be portals, but this door actually leads to something. So I'm going to go through silver, obviously. Let's go in turn base mode. I'm not certain if, when we leave that trap. Be careful. Is that no going to about. trigger it? Consider it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, we did trigger it. It puts you on there, so as soon as you leave it, it's going to trigger. There's another. There oh, another trap here, right in front of us. Unlock hereby the path to the Carsus vault. Okay. How do we get there then? We've unlocked the path. 
the quest marker is saying we have to go to this door specifically on the map. But apparently the door demon is where the quest marker is. So I'm just going to go through there. Let's go into turn-based mode. Okay, and then we can dash. Nice thing about being an assassin is I can just run anywhere I want. Oh, so this is Caster's vault. So this is the vault we need to go in. Okay, awesome. I probably should have not walked on the trap. Uh, dash again. Okay, exit turn based. Can I just get a healing potion here? So I've got a bit of health to play with. This is the vault of Carcerus. There's plus one glaives and great taxes in here. And most importantly, we have a golden chalice. Roll of death rune. 10d6 plus 20 necrotic damage. The annals of Carcerus. An ancient handwritten book rebound at least twice that purports to be notes written by the mage Carsus himself, much of which is a personal wizard cipher, but the final page is written in clear text. My greatest spell of transcendence is mine alone. Not to be committed to ink and parchment, but I have also forgot three supreme enchanted items that are physical embodiments of my wizardry, and of them I shall make record. There is a crown, an orb, and a scepter like the, qu the, the queen's jewels in England. Each knight alive, and with its power and purpose, and these I call the regalia of Carsus. The crown of Carsus to attract and absorb magical knowledge and give the wearer domain over himself so that he remains his own entity apart from the weave. Ah, okay. The Orb of Carsus, a strange device or battery that condenses mystic power, ever glistening so that it must be siphoned at intervals of its success. The Scepter of Carsus, an instrument of protection, a focusing utensil for the precise wielding of unimaginable vast forces. So without those other items, I assume you cannot wield the crown. No of these items you must, for if I fail to achieve immortality, they will persist and, dare I say, live on beyond me. Whoa, scroll of dethrone, 30 to 80 necrotic damage. So we got two? The book itself is worth 2,000 gold. Legendary books we're collecting. Hmm. A book on Netherese magic. Gale might like to know. It is a great paradox among our kind who so value the art of learning that we believe ourselves ever cannier than the ones who came before. If envy is the disease of the artists, Hubris is that of the wizard. Though I fear my warning will fall on deaf ears. I will say it again. The closer a wizard creeps to the domain of the divine, the closer oblivion creeps with him. I thought myself an equal to Mistra and devised a plan to make myself her equal. I would pluck one strand of weave and contain it within an amulet. I spent the better portion of my years devising. How regret instantly heaved itself upon my head. I was trapped within the amulet instantaneously and passed around from collector to curio hall for the better part of a millennium. Only now that I am freed with barely the strength to hold my quill can I leave this final warning as a testimony. Dude, this is literally Gale. This is a note from Magus be warned. Who? Is that like a story in D&D lore? Like, does anyone know who that was? So now we've explored that vault and we're back here. I want to see what happened if we go in here. Silver hand again. And then I want to go in another one of... And we're going to go in evocation. Jump over that trap. Oh, and it's clicked again. This time, let's go in a different door. Oh my god, you can see the, the result each time because look, I know where the door is. It's under Wish. So let's go ahead and enter turn mode. Then I will dash and I'll open this door. Oh, another trap right in front of us. Same placement, so we just go around this. I'm not here by the path to the Elminster vault. Wait, so this is the Elminster that we met, the guy with the red wizard outfit who's kind of like Gandalf. This one has ice traps as well. And once again, if we look on the map, you can see the quest marker is telling us to go in foresight. Press the quest marker and just go in this one. Elmeister, so this is the right one. Exit turn base mode. Should be safe now. Don't stand on the Each trap. Each door is named for a different dusty wizard. <laughs> No prizes for guessing which is hiding the annals of Carsus. 
Well, yeah, obviously. Okay, so here we are. Uh, gilded chest. What is this? 24. The pages are covered in esoteric symbols and strange runes, some indecipherable, but some strangely familiar. Your eyes are drawn to one page describing a long lost book. The Necromancy of Fae. What? So we can read the rest of it with this. That was a tome we found in the blighted village uh, in the basement. You guys remember? These in Act 1. These are secrets of life and death known only to the Red Wizards. Committing such secrets to parchment is a risk they are loath to take, lest the unworthy is upon them. Who better than to guard their secrets than the spirits of the jealous dead themselves? To look upon the necromancy of Fey is to risk madness at the hands of its spirits. But the wise traveller who can tread the line between life and death will find knowledge witnessed by precious few mortals. And the rest of the entry details the risks of reading the text. So this is also worth 2,000 gold. What's in the vases? There's nothing. How about in this chest? Uh, scroll of Sunbeam. Scroll of Disintegrate? Dude, 50 to 100 damage. I can actually two hit someone with that. These are mad. This is probably the most powerful area in the game, to be honest. Like, what you get in here. Discovered both of these vaults. So I think we've pretty much found everything in this area. Oh, no. There's something else here. We open this chest, though. Can we turn on the lantern? Can you get inside? Holy moly. It's lucky Larian actually leaves the cells here. Otherwise, I'd never have found that. I don't know how you're meant to know about this even existing. So there is correspondence. Laura can. We see you and always will. Do take care to maintain the utmost respect for the art. And our purposes need not cross. The Cowed Wizard of Arm. Talking about the Knights on in this book. Powerful spells. These are really powerful spells. I mean, 8 to 48 damage is decent. Global Invulnerability is really cool. We can actually get Gale to learn some of these spells too from there. Portion before Slee. Scroll of Beastal Communication. All right, let's head out here. I wonder if there's any other secret walls that I've missed now. I've got to go back into the main portal room because there's another area. Whoa, I mean, if we go back into this room we explored before, there's another black box here. I click in there, same secret passage. This one just has a peculiar lamp. You've arrived in the nick of time, saintly adventurer. I've been trapped for so long, I dare say I'm half mad. Ho ho! Thanks, Genie, for sacrificing yourself to save me. Such courage brings a tear to the eye. <laughs> Why is he so blurry? What are you talking about? You see, this glorious lamp is both an oasis and a prison. Someone must be inside at all times. But you were the first brave enough to take my place. Thank you ever so much. Toodles! Wait, what? The gin lamp. Oh my god. There's so much loot in here. The diary of the gin. If you were trapped in a magic lamp, you wouldn't like it a bit. It's tiny and stuffy, oily and damp, and you've had to be shrunk to fit. You sit here and ponder your only hope some other fool will enter and then you'll get out. Yellow dye, oil of combustion, the gilded chest here. There's some more spells. Summon Quest. Oh, if we summon this, does it count as one person being inside the lamp so we can escape? Or can I actually just fast travel out of here? You cannot fast travel from this area. Potion of superior healing. Let's go over here. Oil of... Dim illumination, animal speak, another gilded chest, ocean of flying, and a scimitar with loads of gold. All right, so let's try this then. If I use the scroll of summon quest, then it should replace me as being in the lamp. It did indeed. Now, where's that bloody genie got to? I'm going to go kill him. To think he was trapped in there the whole time and didn't realize. Let's take the portal back out. All right, let's go and hide. My whole party is waiting outside for me. Let's enter turn-based mode so we don't get spotted while leaving. Exit turn-based. I want to, if I click on the conjured quest, it's just, it's, just, it's just in the lamp on its own. Look at him, he's, he's stuck here forever. Despite All right, let's talk to Gale then. The annals of Carsus. 
preamble to a civilization's downfall, committed to parchment by the very hand that wrought its destruction. If the crown atop the Elder Brain was truly forged by Carsus himself, this book will confirm it. All we have to do is turn the page. There you go, then. Burn away. My god, they look horrific. He's reading it upside down. Devil Raphael was telling the truth. There's no doubt. The crown of Carsus is what's controlling the Elder Brain. And this fast reader. This is no mere journal. It contains Carsus's original plans for the crown's construction. His designs for godhood. What? The design for self-destruction, more like. Didn't the crown kill Carsus? Not exactly. It was what he did with it that sealed his fate, and for a time, that of magic itself. The crown was merely the means. Hmm. The book states that the crown and netherstones were originally one construct, seemingly sundered at the moment of Carsus's downfall. If we can collect the crown setting and the three netherstones, and with the correct invocation of certain spells and gestures detailed in these notes, I think I could reforge it. To what end? Because he's going to want it and I'm going to want it. You think? Don't sound very confident. What happens if you fail? Well, there'd be risk in such an endeavor, but only proportionate to the reward. The reward? Just think of it. The power of the gods in mortal hands at last would be free of doctrine and dogma, confined only by the limits of our imaginations. I promise you, the gods will never grant us such a blessing, no matter how much we worship and adore them. You think Mistra will let you do this? I don't know. Ao does not look kindly on gods meddling in mortal affairs. She may have no choice but to stand by and let events unfold. Even with the fate of the world at stake, she had little more to offer me than the means of blowing myself up at a more convenient time. She's done nothing to help us. Mistra wanted the brain obliterated because of this crown. She fears a world in which such power is beyond her control, ready to be claimed by Carsus's successor. Oh boy, he's in big boy shoes now, isn't he? I don't think he's learned anything from his past experience messing with the weaves. I thought you were past this kind of temptation, Gail. You know exactly where such overreaching leads. Yeah, that that's so true. But at the same time, my character's kind of interested in getting the crown at full power. But everything I know about it is death. Like, you'd have to be dumb at this point knowing what we know why is astarian in the wall <laughs> sneak 100 and you believe yourself to be the successor to Carsus. you want the crown to settle a score with mistra is that it she sent me to die yeah ambition is not a sin the question the powers that rule us is not treason you must at least try why wallow in the dirt where we can reach for the stars it seems like you've got this all figured out i won't stand in your way this is no passing whim trust me if i can obtain that crown it will affect us all it's not a decision i'll take lightly <laughs> it's our future that i'm thinking of can't rely on anyone else to do it for us for now we've learned all we can whatever comes of this we cannot allow the crown to be reforged in Raphael's image. A devil wielding the might of Carsus. It would be the end of everything. Probably. Man, I, I feel like it's going to end really badly, but I really want the crown. So I want to see if we can use it to control the elder brain. All right, let's go back round to the bookkeeper and see if we can sell the books back to her that we used. <laughs> Oh, so she can just tell you about them? She only has 1,000 gold, though. Oh, I can't sell them to her. That's funny. The master of the tower is dead. I'm not sure he has a replacement. What will you do? The same as I've always done. I deal in knowledge, not proprietors. Quietly getting on with things is a virtue, you know. Yeah, okay. How are you feeling about the books? Still sensitive? <laughs> can we keep doing this? All right, see ya.
Oh, one sec. Elmeister is standing outside, guys. How about that? Hello, my boy. No, don't mind me. I'm uh, just enjoying a lungful of bull terrier now. <laughs> Yes, a distinctive aroma, though perhaps not one worthy of bottling. Tell me, what curiosities have you and your uh, companions discovered within the walls of this esteemed emporium? I don't trust you. He's digging. He's digging. We actually raided your vault, Grandmister. You don't seem at all that surprised to see Gale alive and well. I trusted he would be sensible enough to exercise caution in this matter and to seek the truth. By now, you are aware of the evil we are up against. Cassos' a pestilent crown, the very tool with which its eponymous creator unmade an empire and magic itself. Perhaps now you understand what is at stake here, my boy. Though what Mr. asked of you was extreme, it was not without merit, nor demanded lightly. What are you saying? Or rather, what are you not saying? Mm. Mr. knows you defied her, game. Well, of course she knows. She's Mistra. She bids you come to her holy shrine in the Stormshore Tabernacle. There, she will grant you an audience at last. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I'll tell exactly what's coming when we get our hands on that crown. <laughs> no, I'll stay silent. So I'll see what he says. I'll see what he wants to do. Mistress willing to speak to me again? Was this your doing, Elminster? She knows what I see in you, just as I know what she sees in you. I was not born an old man. I know all too well what it's like to have a goddess fill your heart with longing. Looking you? at you is like gazing into a mirror that shows centuries long past. The past is the past, Elminster, and the future is, well, still to be decided by me, not by Mistra. If there is another way, I trust you can find it. It is not in your nature or mine to stop looking, to accept the first answer to any dilemma. Do what you can. Put that mind to work. Trust in yourself. Trust in the weave. If you are willing, trust in Mistra. There is a conclusion yet to be written in this sorry tale, Gale of Waterdeep. And yours is the quill that will write it. So wise. Oh, he's so wise, isn't he? Where's he gone? Just disappeared. Wow. So all it took to get Mistress' attention was to learn how to reforge an artifact that once destroyed her. Yep. It's obvious when you stop to think about it. You're back in the tress match. You're suddenly a piece on the board. And now she comes crying. She's scared of you. You're one step closer to being able to challenge her. Not scared. Not yet. But she's shaken. If she feels the need to intervene directly. Hmm. This is a conversation that's long overdue on both sides. I owe it to her to hear her out. Come what may afterwards. I agree. It's time we headed to Stormshore Tabernacle. No, I, I want to see how this ends. After you. Well, Sorcerer's Sundries was an incredible location. From Sorcerer's Sundries, we need to get all the way over here to meet Mistra in Stormshore Tabernacle, which is this building right here on the map. Let's head on inside. Stormshore Tabernacle. Tabernacle. Great name. Mistress Likeness. It's been some time since I stood before her in a place like this. I'm sure you'll understand if I remain unbowed. There she stands, just as Elminster promised. Mistra, goddess of the weave, mother of all magic. Damn the old girl. man wasn't lying. She's opened the summoning channel. Can't you feel it? Gail's right. 
The very air around the statue crackles with magic. It sets your teeth on edge. A stream of pure, undiluted weave. I only have to reach out, and it will carry me to Mistra, wherever she may be. Well, go on then. It's rude to keep a goddess waiting. Time was, I'd have given my right arm for a chance to speak with Mistra again. <laughs> the left one, too. Maybe a knee. I don't think she's that kind of goddess. <laughs> Thankfully not. No, she's not been averse to demanding the odd human sacrifice in recent days, has she? No. When I pictured this moment, I thought I'd feel more in control. Yet, yeah, here I am, with palms sweatier than a bugbear's armpit. Oh. I always wonder what being nervous would feel like. I hate it. Of all the things to be nervous about, an audience with a goddess sounds reasonable. You're kind to say so, but this is hardly my first time in Mistress' presence. It's more the matter of what I'm going to say to her. Well, During my time locked away in Waterdeep, I prepared a quite comprehensive speech for her on the subject of our former relationship and the manner in which it ended. Alas, recent events have rendered the majority of it moot, so I'm going to have to improvise. Unless you have any words of wisdom to impart before I go. Oh yeah, I give you some wisdom. Make her squirm. Tell her the crown will be ours soon enough. Don't give anything away. Just find out what she has to say. That's solid advice. Don't reveal the whole plan like the evil villain, Gale. You'd make a fine three dragon anti player, you know? I think it's best I keep a cool head going into this. Approach it like a particularly high risk round of three dragon anti. I'll let Mistress show her flight, and then I can see how strong a chance we stand of winning the gambit. Hmm. I'll only be gone for a matter of moments. The Outer Plains experience time quite differently to our own. Wait for me. Please. I'm gutted that we don't get to see Mistra. I thought he was gone. He's still here. Or is he back? I'm confused. Okay, here he goes. Did we get to see this scene? I want to see Gale's... Goddess Waifu. Gale of Waterdeep. You look well. As do you. But I assume we're not here solely to exchange compliments. So why am I here? You discovered what lies at the heart of the Absolute. The Crown of Causes. And you disobeyed my instruction. Why? Because you had no right to ask that of me. You cast me out. Remember, AF. You were my lover, my chosen. Yet still you know so little of me. The past cannot be undone with self-pity, nor can a future be forged. Only with the truth will you see the way ahead. The fragment of magic you tried to return to me was not of my creation. It was the Carsite Weave. It is a corrupted, half-born magic wrought in the brief moment Carsus ascended to godhood. It hungers for power, just as he did, and it can never be sated. You unleashed something that would consume all magic in existence, and yet you thought only of preserving yourself. So that's what you're scared of. With the crown of Carsus reforged, I could take control of the Carsite Weave. You can no more control the Carsite Weave than a weather vane could control a storm. Mm. That it entered your body and consumed no more than your powers was a miracle. But we will not be granted another. The only reason the orb sleeps is because I have allowed it to feed on the true weave. A temporary measure, but one that will not be enough to save us. Oh, wow. With each day that passes, the Elder Brain threatens to become a new kind of god. Its worshippers, a scourge of soulless illithids. If you will not use the orb to end this abomination, then you must find a way to separate crown and host. When you've done this, 
You must surrender the crown of Carsis to me. Everyone wants this great yeah. ask indeed. You've given me much to think on. As you always did. So be it. Follow the needle of your own wisdom. We shall see how truly it leads you. To be honest, guys, Mistra, 5 out of 10. Bang on average. Gale? Not that impressed, bro. You really told me that she was something magical, but, you know, very average. All right, Gale, let's see what he tells us. The car site weave. I had no idea. Do you realize what this means? The orb is no stray piece of ordinary magic. It is something entirely different. The nascent form of a new divine power. Of course, I couldn't control it. I was mortal. But once I reforge the crown, the power of a god will be mine to command. The orb will answer to me. Did you not listen to anything she just told you? Building the power to destroy a city. I like the sound of that. So do I. Though I'm not sure that's the purpose I'd apply it to. Let me assure you. Carsite Weave has no more inherent evil to it than a, a child in the womb. Or an axe half forged on the blacksmith's anvil. It is a tool ready to be shaped by its wielder. By me. And you know me to be someone of reasonably sound moral judgment, don't you? Well, you've not stopped me killing everyone you've met. Morals be damned. This is an incredible opportunity. You must take it. God, it's refreshing to share the company of someone who sees things the same way I do. Power. All we need to do is stay focused on the task at hand. Defeating that elder brain. After that, you can leave the rest to me. Oh, damn, I, this is not going to end well. This is not going to end well. <laughs> Gale is not going to survive this. He's just going to be like, he's power hungry. Thank you very much for watching today's video, my friends. I will see you in the next one linked down below. We're going to be either finally bringing an end to Gortash or we'll be following Astarian's storyline to the end and decimating his vampire overlord so he can finally ascend into the most powerful vampire that's ever lived. I'm not sure which yet, but I'll link it down below in the description.